right, finally, case number 10 is a 15-year-old male with a skin nodule on the leg. Now, I didn't let you preview this one, so I'm going to, to explain it. Here is the skin surface. Let's see if I can get it right side up. And then down here in the deep dermis and extending way down into the subcutis, we've got a spindle cell proliferation. It's pink. You can see that it encases many of the eccrine coils here. And if we look closer at the cells, they are bland little spindle cells. They've got a, some fine, delicate collagen in there and a little bit of a, a bit of a pale kind of mixoid background slightly. This slide's a little bit faded, um, but it's a very pale kind of appearance. And then let's look down deeper. You can see that there's some entrapment of fat, again, entrapment of the eccrine coils, actually a lot of fat entrapment. And in a way, it has a very uh, kind of honeycomb appearance, right? So for those of you watching at home, what do you think this is? I'm going to go closer and see if you can figure it out. And if you did CD34 staining here, it would be strongly positive. So the temptation would be to call this dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans, DFSP. It's got honeycomb fat entrapment. It's got bland spindle cells. Um, that's the stuff that DFSP has. But the problem here is that it's actually also S100 positive. This is a diffuse neurofibroma. Um, which can often entrap fat, sometimes extensively. And I think it's really important to know about this because a lot of people forget that neurofibromas often express, the majority of them will express CD34 because there's a background dendritic cell component. This case also has a couple of these little like elongated, um, expanded nerve trunks, which are also filled with neurofibroma. And in fact, this patient had an F1, unfortunately. And so this is a tiny little bit of plexiform neurofibroma mingled in with this um, diffuse neurofibroma. And again, I would never, without any clinical information, would never say, oh, that's plexiform neurofibroma, but this patient did have NF1. And in reality, you often do see in NF1 patients diffuse neurofibroma intermingled in the background between the trunks of plexiform neurofibroma. And I don't know if there was a larger, deeper plexiform neurofibroma under this or just a few kind of expanded branches there. But I find those expanded nerve trunks really helpful to recognize. You don't always see this, but if you see something like that in a, um, in a diffuse neurofibroma, I mean, that would, be, that would not be something you would see in dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans. And again, doing SOX10 or S100 is going to confirm that, this is, uh, that there's a Schwann cell um, component to this lesion. And unlike schwannomas, which are completely composed of Schwann cells, there are often fibroblasts and perineural cells in addition to Schwann cells in a neurofibroma. So not every single cell in a neurofibroma is going to usually stain with S100 and SOX10. It'll be many of the cells, but there will be a background subset of cells that are negative, And those are the fibroblasts and the perineural cells, which are present in varying amounts. But this is a really good example of just how incredibly um, diffuse the growth pattern can be. I can't, I wish I could go even lower power but eventually I will scan this slide. And if you're watching this online, look down in the video description and you'll be able to eventually see a link to this. And um, you can then explore for yourself and see just how extensively infiltrative this lesion is. Um, so not all diffuse neurofibromas look like this, but sometimes they do. So entrapment of fat and also entrapment of the eccrine coils uh, can be seen in diffuse neurofibroma. And uh, particularly when you have NF1 patients with large diffuse neurofibromas, you can actually see it extend down into the muscle and really involve vessels and normal structures deep down, um, even below the subcutis. So um, uh, they can, they're benign, but can be quite disfiguring. And um, there is one thing that I wanted to show you, but this particular diffuse neurofibroma doesn't have, but there is a structure that is usually present, but not always, uh, usually present in diffuse neurofibroma. So I'm going to cheat and pull a different case here um, because this um, case has a very uh, good example of this structure. And what you see are these little uh, spindle cells that are kind of wrapping around each other, kind of oval to spindle to round cells wrapping around each other. And in the middle, they have little pink centers that are little pink layers, like little stacked layers of collagen. You can see there's a cluster of them here, here, here. Sometimes they're single, but sometimes they're in little world clusters like this. And again, if you flip your condenser, you can see they're made of little flaky layers of collagen. 
Here's another one right here. And if you're watching from home, does this remind you of any structure you've seen? Elsewhere in the body, perhaps? And here's more of them. There's a whole like cluster of them. Here's like 50 of them. These are called Wagner-Meissner bodies, and they are, are very similar to what you see in a Meissner's corpuscle, the fine touch receptors that's in the papillary dermis, on the fingertips and the toes, on, right underneath in the dermal papillae. There are these little round structures that are, uh, that are kind of Schwann cells wrapped around a center that looks like little layers or stacks of, of collagen. I used to think they looked like kind of striped pink Easter eggs. Um, and one of my histology colleagues at a former uh, job that I had said that they reminded them of cotton candy. And I thought, oh, that's nice because it's loose and fluffy and swirly. So it's like, imagine like, you know, 50 cotton candies stuck together here. So these are Wagner-Meissner bodies. And again, they, if you just take one of these, it very closely recapitulates what you see in a Meissner's corpuscle in the skin. Um, I mean, in the, in the papillary dermis. So when you find those, that's a nice clue for the diffuse type of neurofibroma. They often have those, not always though. Um, and uh, that's a pretty, this is a pretty robust example. Uh, this is a different case, which we'll have to leave for another day, but I will point out that occasionally um, diffuse neurofibromas can actually have a prominent round cell component. And see, these are not as spindled, these cells, they're still Schwann cells, but they're actually very round, kind of oval to, to round, and they can get to be actually even kind of hypercellular in some areas, like up here and there. I think maybe on another slide there even, portion of the slide they're even more so they can even start making you think about like a round blue cell tumor but they they still are usually spaced out a little bit and the cells are totally bland and have almost no mitotic figures but just know that diffuse neurofibromas actually can have kind of a rounded cell and i remember the first time i saw this when i was in fellowship i thought how is this a neurofibroma the cells are round but in fact that does happen and it's a known thing and this patient was also an nf1 patient unfortunately and um like all neurofibromas there are often little mast cells floating around in that background because the background of neurofibromas and some other neural uh, proliferations often has a bit of a you know kind of hyaluronic acid glycosaminoglycan, myxoid or mucin substance, kind of very delicately intermingled between the Schwann cells and the collagen. And wherever the mucin or myxoid stuff is, uh, mast cells tend to like hanging out there. So another diffuse neurofibroma with some really nice Wagner-Meissner bodies. Oh, and I forgot to mention that you can also see things that look just like Wagner-Meissner bodies. Oh, and isn't this cool? I thought this one was neat that it's got like kind of tiger stripe pattern. Um, of like almost like it wants to palisade or something. I That's the only case I can personally remember having seen that did that. And I thought that was a particularly fascinating uh, finding. But the, um, oh yeah, that these uh, Wagner-Meissner bodies, you can see nearly identical structures in neurotized uh, nevi, like congenital pattern nevi that are very thin and spindly um, type C melanocytes. You can get structures that look just like this and, and are Wagner-Meissner-like, or I think the other name for them are Masson bodies or tactoid bodies, because everything has to have several names in derm path, you know. So that is an example of diffuse neurofibroma. And do remember that the fat entrapment, the honeycomb pattern is not always DFSP. And if you're thinking DFSP, don't just do CD34, add an S100, because it's exceptionally rare for S100 to be positive in DFSP. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this video, and Iman, excellent job on these cases, and I hope you all enjoyed.